Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of incomplete subclavian steel. You have already requested a lot to make videos on Doppler cases, so let's start. An elderly male patient was admitted in our cardiac surgery department for coronary artery bypass graft. He was sent to us for a routine neck vessel Doppler assessment prior to his surgical procedure. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here we want to start with the carotid system and you can see the right common carotid and internal carotid arteries show mildly increased intermedial thickness that is followed 0.8 mm as the maximum normal range in our center. The right common carotid artery shows moderate luminal narrowing due to type 2 soft plug. You can see the area reduction is around 60% here. The beta segment of the right common carotid artery shows normal flow velocity. The right carotid bulb shows severe stenosis with around 80% surface area reduction. You can see the type 3 plugs that is the mostly echogenic plug causing severe luminal narrowing at this point. The right internal carotid artery also shows severe luminal stenosis with around 72% surface area reduction at this point with a type 1 plug that is a sonolucent plug. So you have checked the flow velocity here and the right internal carotid artery shows high flow velocity that is the PSV of 283 cm per second which also goes in favor of severe stenosis. The right external carotid artery also shows increased flow velocity here. On the left side you can see the intermedial thickness is still increased with 0.9 mm on both common carotid and internal carotid arteries. The left bulb shows type 3 plugs with mild luminal narrowing that is less than 50% surface area reduction. Here's the spectrum of the left common carotid artery which shows almost normal flow velocity. The left internal carotid artery also had type 2 plug causing mild luminal narrowing. The spectral Doppler of the internal carotid artery shows mildly increased flow velocity. The external carotid artery on this side has also got an increased flow velocity. Now let's jump into the vertebral artery. I would love to go on the left vertebral artery first and you can see it is showing a high peak systolic velocity with a relative low diastolic flow in comparison to the systolic flow that is an increased resistive index here. The peak systolic velocity was around 102 cm per second so it is giving a high peak systolic velocity flow here. To search for the reason of this high velocity, we have to jump into the right vertebral artery. In right vertebral artery, with same preset, you can see it is showing a reverse component here at mid or late systole, forming a biphasic or in the term multiphasic wave pattern. So this alternating forward and reverse flow, that is the deceleration of velocity in mid or late systole, indicates high-grade stenosis of ipsilateral subclavian artery that is known as partial or incomplete subclavian steel. This is the systolic flow and there is a striking deceleration of velocity here. Then you can see the forward diastolic flow. So this is a case of incomplete subclavian steel. So in summary, alternating forward and reverse flow direction are noted during each cardiac cycle in right vertebral artery with striking deceleration of velocity in mid or late systole indicating high grade distances of right subclavian artery suggesting partial or incomplete steel. Now the take home message. There are two different terms regarding the subclavian steel, subclavian steel phenomenon and subclavian steel syndrome. The subclavian steel phenomenon represents stenoclusive disease of the proximal subclavian artery with retrograde flow in the ipsilateral vertebral artery. The subclavian steel syndrome is same as the subclavian steel phenomenon with the addition of cerebral ischemic symptoms. The subclavian steel is more common in male patients and it is three times commoner in left side. It has got three types, the pre-steel, incomplete or partial steel and the complete steel. We also do the provocative maneuver to assess this further. 
If you want to know detail about the subclavian still syndrome, don't forget to comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. Expect some Doppler videos next. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.